Okay, uh, hello, my name is Matthew. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about uh, Silas Marner by George Eliot. Uh, but first, I want to make a correction on one of my prior videos. Um, if anyone watched the uh, Tiny House tour, I, I, I rewatched the video. And uh, at the very end, when I was kind of wrapping up, I made a comment. I, I guess it just sounded good. Uh, and I said, um, after going through the house, I said I didn't want to go uh, too much into depth. Um, and rewatching it, uh, the fact is that was me at full depth. If anyone was watching it and thought that you wished that I would go uh, more into detail, that was as deep as I could go. So that that's it. I just thought that was kind of funny. Um, couldn't go any deeper. Um, so I read Silas Marner um, for... The reason I read it was that um, after I had read um, The Mill and the Floss, um, a gentleman named uh, Joseph, Joseph Francis Burton um, he commented on my video and uh, kind of he referred me to uh, his review of uh, the mill and the floss, and I was I was so taken aback by the ending of that novel that it it almost like tainted my experience of the whole thing, um, and so I felt um, compelled to read another George Eliot book that I had already read. Um, j just to see how my experience goes um, th through the book. I feel like if I read The Mill and the Floss again, um, being aware of how the book ends um, would just change the experience. And uh, uh, Joseph um, talked about all the foreshadowing that goes throughout the book that I missed entirely because um, really no one can expect how the thing's going to end. Anyway. Um, and very quickly I'll mention, I saw that uh, Brian from Bookish also did uh, a review of uh, Silas Marner. I'm going to try to put links of both both of those uh, videos um, here. I, I don't have a computer, so I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can do it on my phone. If not, I'll <clears throat> try to do it um, the next time I have a computer available. Um, so as far as it goes... Um, I, I, I very much enjoyed the book. Um, that being said, um, I do think that it has some rocky storytelling. Um, that I, I feel like I picked up on it much more reading it again because I, I remember that it's that it was um, a difficult book to get into, and. Um, I think I kind of I have my own feelings about why. So it's it's a two part book. Um, the story is Silas Marner is um, he's an old man or he's 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 a guy that uh, right away um, is sort of um, wrongfully accused and he uh, leaves his town and moves into another town and he's a weaver and basically becomes a hermit. Um, or leaves that kind of light lifestyle. Um, he he has like a little hovel, um, and he does his work and he saves his money. And he's really proud about his money. Uh, obsesses over it. At each night he takes it out, and s somehow this weaver is amassing a pile of gold, which I, I, I'll kind of get to in a minute. Um, but then it's stolen from him. Um, and, and, the, and the story goes on. Um, well, the, f the second part of the book, um, uh, I think this, this, the style of writing is completely different or just, just different. And what I think is that the first part is nearly a ghost story, um, 
there's a, a lot of very strange supernatural elements. There's um, a lot of talk about ghosts. Uh, some of the characters have like mystical elements. Um, even some of the actions that happen, um, it's not not very clear if there was like supernatural elements. So when Silas gets his gold stolen, um, he doesn't only think that maybe he was robbed. Um, he wonders if there was some other force um, happening. But the narration uh, to me comes from almost as if uh, the narrator is like a suspicious neighbor um, or a town, suspicious town folk. And the majority of the story is set in the town that Silas escapes to. So here's a stranger coming into town. And um, in a lot of ways it reminded me of um, <clears throat> Late in August by uh, Faulkner. Uh, and a couple of Faulkner's books have like this strange mystical quality. Um, which I feel like kind of boils down to like the mystery of the unknown. Um, how you explain, you know, the, the way that people will explain things that they don't quite understand. Um, and I think what makes the first part of the book jarring is the fact that um, with all of these uh, mystical qualities, um, George Eliot is still walking that line of presenting it in a realistic manner. And I feel like it comes off like just a tad jarring. Um, and the other uh, part that I noticed is how Silas Marner, um, for a good part of the first part of the book, is absent. There, there's... Um, there's a scene that's in a bar, and there's a scene that's in a house, uh, there's other characters, there's a lot of characters in this book, at least in the first part, um, that it, you know, it's, it's, it does come off a little strange that like the main character is missing for most of it. And also, uh, Silas Marner is a completely passive character for almost the entire book. Um, uh, other than him moving to this town, all of the action in the book is put on him. Like, he he, uh, he gets accused of robbery. Uh, later on, uh, someone comes in and steals his money. The, the other thing is, like, how clueless he is. Maybe I'll see both of those at the same time. Um, someone walks into his house and takes the money. He doesn't. He wasn't there to see it happen. Later on, um, a little toddler toddles into his house while he's home and falls asleep. He's unaware of that. Uh, but uh, he, he's almost doing nothing throughout the, the whole book. Everything else is just happening to him. Um, it wasn't until the second part that I, I feel like the book like really catches its stride. Um, it's a little unfortunate because it's like 180 pages. And the first part's like 130. Hey, Daphne, 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 come on. That's a good girl. That's a good girl. Um, and But the, the, the second part, I feel like, makes up for the first part. Um, one, all of the backstory that you get, um, I feel like is very much rewarded. Um, so there's just a very, very long setup to create um, a very specific set of extraordinary circumstances um, that then just play out beautifully. Um, Silas has... Um, <clears throat> Daphne, Daphne, stop it. Sorry, Daphne. Um, Silas ends up ra raising a, a young girl that's left, um, that he basically found at his doorstep. And they just have like the most tender, loving, beautiful conversations. Um, you really get an understanding of Silas's character. Um, 
and I don't, I don't know how much it's mentioned in the book, but a, as the young girl, her name is Epi, uh, as she grows up, you pretty much only get the sense that she's a good person. Um, and that doesn't happen accidentally. It, it's, it's a way of showing that Silas is a good person, a genuinely good person. Um, and it, 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 a lot of his pa passive um, attitudes uh, also kind of reveal um, his uh, kind of eth ethical standards and senses of morality. But uh, it is nice just to see that like he raised a daughter um, that has convictions and uh, a strong set of morals, um, a understanding of uh, family and love, um, and a very mature understanding. Um, it's beautiful. I mean, I, 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 the last 50 pages are really wonderful. Uh, and it's also very, it's, the other nice thing is that the book has a great ending, uh, opposed to The Mel and the Floss, which um, I'm still kind of reeling over. Um, Kind of, I think I'm kind of wrapping up. Um, I did, I did bookmark one thing. I can't even remember what I wrote or what I bookmarked. Uh, so it says the pipes began to be puffed in a silence which had an air of severity. I bookmarked that because I feel like it. It's a good representation of the. Um, tonal atmosphere of the entire book. Um, a lot of times when I'm reading, I always I, I imagine the light, uh, how, how the settings are lighted. Uh, so if, you know, if, if I'm reading like an Oscar Wilde story, let's say, I always imagine light pouring through window panes or uh, like Balzac uh, always kind of has like a golden glow of lanterns and lights. Um, this book is so dire, so dark, um, melancholy. Um, it, it, it really gave me a feeling that the book is entirely set in darkness and pipe smoke. Um, it's not entirely without humor, but it's uh, sparse. Um, but I'm glad I read it. This is an, another Victober book. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to move on to. Um, but, um, I also chose this one because it was so short. Anyway, um, leave a comment if you would like. Uh, thank you for watching, um, and goodbye.